Hi guys and girls, this is Lucas from Psychoforge and welcome to the first episode in the tutorial series for the Easy Decal plugin in Unity. In this episode, we will look at the basic functionalities of Easy Decal. Let's start with the new project. We can open the packet manager and under My Assets, we can search for Easy Decal. If an update is available, you should update first. I'm fast forwarding here. After downloading the update, click on Import. In the window that opens, make sure that all check marks are set and then click Import again. Now that we have successfully installed Easy Decal, let's have a look at the standard workflows and the standard shaders. At this point, I want to mention that if you work in a URP or HDRP workflow, it is important that you import the respective extensions by double-clicking on the corresponding Unity packages. But since we are now concentrating on the standard workflow, I'll leave that for now. In case you're interested, I'll be recording further tutorials on URP and HDRP. Let's open the included demo scene. The folders Extensions, Content and Demos are not needed for the basic functionalities of the API, but they contain useful application examples and content to make the start easier. So Easy Decal already comes with dozens of decals that can be used out of the box in your projects. That is it for the installation and extensions. So let's start with our introduction. I have opened the first demo scene. What you see here are different projectors. On the one hand, we have mesh-based projectors. These include the box projector and the plane projector. Both of them generate a mesh, which means that when we bake such an object, a standard Unity mesh is generated in the background, which hardly needs any performance and only has minimal CPU overhead. On the other hand, there are screen space decals. First, there is the deferred projector, which only works with the deferred rendering path. That means if you set the rendering path to forward, these decals will not be rendered anymore. Another important thing with all screen space decals is that you render with a perspective camera. With a non-perspective, for example, an orthogonal camera, these decals will not be rendered. Well, let's have a look at the available settings and properties. Mesh decals are divided into two baking modes, a soft bake, which is controlled by the component and a hard bake. In the soft bake, I can select bake geometry. This means that the decal is baked immediately and the geometry cannot be changed anymore. The second option here is bake on awake, which causes the geometry to be baked when entering the play mode. This is what I've done here. With this option, the consumed CPU time is almost zero, but a small CPU overhead remains, which results from the component. And this is where the hard bake mode comes into play. If you want to perform a hard bake for a decal, this can be found under the tab Extras. Here I can save the decal as a prefab with the corresponding mesh asset. I can select Instantiate after save so that the generated prefab is instantiated at the original position. The result here is a finished mesh with only one mesh renderer and mesh filter and one material. Nothing more, so there is no overhead. Here I have the automatically generated prefab and the linked mesh, but here I have some unnecessary geometry. This can be avoided by, let me delete that decal again, by setting the angle to under 89 under constraints and thus deleting all faces that have an angle of more than 89 degrees to the projection direction. I now generate the prefab again. Now this looks right. So we have generated a mesh without overhead and unnecessary areas which has best performance. 
As a further option, I can choose to have normals calculated. For the light-based shaders, for example with normal maps, this is mandatory. Additionally, I can specify if tangents should be calculated and if I need light probes. At this point, we can now really play with the constraints. Here, I can define a decal should run out over time. I can specify that it should not be destroyed after successful unraveling if I want to reuse it in a pool. I can specify a lifetime and a fade out time, which means that the decal will start to fade out after 5 seconds and the fade out process is finished after 1 second. Additionally, I can specify an alpha curve to control the fade out. Furthermore, I can specify a projection angle, which we have already looked at briefly before. This is to exclude areas that exceed a certain angle and we can thereby avoid strong texture distortion. The box projector searches for possible decal receivers using collider intersections. This means that if an object has no collider, the projector cannot see it and it is not part of the projection. Here is another example. I have a parent with a collider. Within the parent, I have a child without a collider. This situation often occurs in game development. I want the child to be able to receive the decal. For this, I activate a recursive lookup in the constraints and specify the direction and depth of the search. If our child would have another child, it would only become part of the projection if I set the level of the lookup steps to at least 2. Furthermore, I can control with the layer mask which objects are part of the projection. I can assign the object to layer 8, hide from mesh decals. This can be any layer though. If I now set the mask to everything, all accessible objects are included. If I deliberately exclude layer 8, the object is not visible for the projector. In combination with recursive lookup, the function is only applied to the parent. The game object with the existing collider, for example, the layer of its children, is irrelevant. If I now assign layer 8 to the child, it receives the decal after all, which is found via parenting using recursive lookup. But on the parent it works, for example the topmost parent with collider determines via the layer whether the decal is projected or not. Another way to restrict the projection is to specify individual projection targets. For example, I can specify the cube here, so only this cube is considered as target. Everything else is ignored. Important here is that I set the lookup constraint to down only, or switch off recursive lookup completely. Because if the receiver is the scene root, all game objects in the scene root could qualify as possible targets by the lookup in upward direction. This is interesting, for example, if a decal is only to be applied to a door, but not to the door frame, even though the two objects are on the same layer. The next mesh decal is the plane projector, which I can select above this drop-down. Unlike the box projector, I only have an approximation to the surface of the receiver. For example, it does not wrap itself perfectly around the mesh. I can illustrate this here with a sphere. If I screw the resolution up here, it gets better and better, but never as good as with the box projector, which cuts the mesh perfectly but in many cases the plane projector is sufficient. The plane and box projector both have a distance feature. This describes an offset in the direction of the vertex normals. Normally we can leave it at zero because all included shaders already have an offset integrated to avoid Z fighting. Here I can set the projection mode, either in direction of the decal projection or in direction of the centered surface normals of the receiver. The last important projector is the skinned box projector for skinned meshes. At the moment there is a limitation that the decal can only be placed at design time in the editor, 
At runtime, the decals can then be switched on or off. Here, I set the projection technique to box to explain why we need a skinned box projector. If I now switch to play mode, the decal initially encloses the character, but it is not influenced by the bones during animation, which is what we would want. I'll click stop at this point and select the skinned box technique. It is important that Bake on Awake is selected. I click on play again. Now, the decal is influenced and deformed by the bones. As always, I can apply different decals to the character. I can duplicate the decal again, select a different motive and click on start again. My decals wrap perfectly around the model and transform and deform with the animation. Now I can save the decal as asset. I say instantiate after save again and save. And now the decal is part of my character. What all decal types have in common is the source mode. This is either Atlas or Material. Material renders the entire texture defined by the material and in the Atlas mode, you can choose between different texture regions defined in the Atlas asset. These regions can be modified and extended in the Atlas editor. Here in the right column, I see all existing regions listed and can edit or delete them individually. Let's create such an atlas right away. To do this, I open a new Photoshop file and add some text decals. I save the file and since Unity can interpret PSD files, I can work with them directly. So I create a new atlas object in the context menu, which can be opened with a right click using create, easy decal, texture atlas. Then I generate a new material which I call decal. I assign the texture to the material and then the material to the atlas. In Photoshop, I activate the alpha channel by hiding the background and saving it again. Now I open my atlas in the atlas editor. Either I could generate the regions by manually specifying width and height in percentage or with the control and quick selection tool. This way I can quickly and easily define one texture region after the other. Then I can select a decal here and assign it to the just generated atlas. I can set the aspect mode to height here. Then the decal always stays the same height. This would be our first decal atlas. Besides the normal decal placement using the transform gizmos, I can activate the smart placement mode by holding down the alt and control keys. Then I can move the decals with the left mouse button pressed and they will automatically align themselves to the surface. With Alt Control pressed and the mouse wheel, I can switch between the decals in the Atlas. With the right mouse button held down, the decals can be rotated, and with the middle mouse button held down, the decals can be scaled. This functionality allows a fast and easy workflow to populate your worlds with decals. Also important is to choose the right type of decal depending on your application. For example, screen space decals are good for dynamic, moving decals, or those that need to be instantiated at runtime, like bullet holes or damage decals. All mesh based decals are great for static decals like graffiti or general environment details. The important thing with mesh based decals is that they are either soft baked 
in the component or hard baked using save to asset. We can take a quick look at the impact of mesh decals on performance by opening the profiler and saying that the decal is not baked and then switching to play mode. If we go one level deeper in the profiler here, we have an easy decal instance in the player loop in the update behavior, which is 0.32 milliseconds for one decal and has a garbage collector allocation of 1.7 kilobytes. Now we can start the same scene, but this time with baked decal. Here you can see that we have no more memory allocation per frame and use 0.00 millisecond CPU. This is exactly what we want to achieve. Better than that is only hard baking as an asset, in which case I also have no more overhead that can result from the easy decal component. Another way to manage decals in a scene is the easy decal manager, which can be opened via window easy decal manager. I have an overview of my scene, which decals are in it. I can delete or hide decals in a central place. And even more important, I can group decals by atlas groups so I can see which decals use or share which atlas. And I can combine all decals per atlas to a mesh so that they can be rendered with only one draw call. With a click on the combine button, the decals are combined to one mesh. The workflow is non-destructive, so for example, I can always undo this again. Also at this point, a combined group could be saved as an asset. Combined decals now don't generate overhead anymore and can be rendered with a single draw call, which allows a great performance. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified about upcoming episodes of this tutorial series. Comment below or join our Discord for feedback and questions.